continue talking about this. America's reevaluation of nuclear energy is a process that's taking place all over the world and other countries as well. Chris Kadomsky is the lead nuclear analyst at Bloomberg New Energy Finance, the world's top provider of clean energy and carbon market research to investors. And Chris has also consulted and worked on clean energy projects throughout the world for more than 25 years. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Chris. Let me ask you how how nuclear energy fits into America's long-term sort of plan here. We don't have a federal energy policy, really. No, we don't have a federal energy policy. And we would use nuclear power to uh, build out additional base load. We can also use other technologies for use, building that base load. We can use coal, but coal has a tremendous carbon footprint, and we have very great concerns about a carbon footprint. Even clean coal, and I, we brought that up, you know, we just talked with the CEO of um, AEP. I mean, even clean coal has its problems? <clears throat> clean coal has nothing to do with carbon dioxide. Clean coal has remo removal of, of uh, sulfur, nitrous oxides, mercury, but doesn't take out the CO2 unless you do carbon capture and sequestration. That's a totally different process. That's an add-on, mm. and it reduces the efficiency of the coal power plant. So you need to, certain effect, burn more electricity to get the same, burn more coal to get the same amount of electricity out. So it's something that is being very seriously looked at by, by Germany. Uh, in the UK, the Europeans are very hot on that. And they're doing that for social reasons, too, because there's a lot of people in the coal region coal industries. So if you can develop carbon capture and sequestration, you can keep a lot of people in the coal industries. Hence, one of the S's or the S social implications on this deep analysis. Well, that you know, Mike about. Morris yeah. was just talking to us about uh, carbon capture there. He seemed kind of on board. Does it really matter, though, how big your carbon footprint is if, as long as you don't risk, you know, the black swan of a nuclear plant, uh, you know, destroying an entire city? You know, this is a societal choice that we need to make. And we, as a society, need to be able to manage nuclear power effectively because nuclear power is not going away. It's going to stay here because of the, the Russians are involved in it, the Chinese are involved in it, the Japanese, Europeans are still involved. So it's going to be part of the energy equation. So the U.S. has a decision to make. Do we want to let that technology, which we were very, very instrumental in moving forward, do we want to leave that scene, get our hands out of that? Or, and watch other countries develop a nuclear power plants with us not being involved in it? Or do we need to go ahead and be actively involved and in leading the way to a safe nuclear future or without proliferation concerns? I want to talk. I mean, if, if folks in Europe are seeing nuclear as a transitional energy, I mean, what happens though with all the waste, Chris, after which stays around for, for years? Well, first of all, people have a misconception about how much waste there is. We have 70,000 tons of waste. My God, that seems like a tremendous amount. But as part of my teaching at New York University, I routinely take students to the Indian Point spent fuel pool. And instead of watching the spent fuel pool, I watch their eyes when they look into the spent fuel. And there's utter shock and amazement in their eyes because there is so little spent fuel. It just, there's not a lot of it. But still, well, you know, it's such a political ball. Nobody wants the waste in their backyard. Nobody wants the waste in their state. Right. I mean, so then what do we do with it? In the France, they go ahead and they're reprocessing technology. They use a reprocessing technology. And the problem with that, that it creates plutonium, which is then recycled and put into uh, uh, other reactors to burn the fuel. There are advanced reactor technologies, uh, GE Hitachi is working one called a prism reactor, which is going to recycle the fuel and significantly reduce the, the uh, spent fuel equation. What, what do you do about the possibility of a black swan event? I realize that nobody, uh, that there haven't been conclusive studies that anyone was hurt because of Three Mile Island. We haven't seen uh, a horrible disaster in Japan yet, but there's a possibility that some mishap, an earthquake, a tsunami, uh, equipment failure, could release radiation on, you know, a city the size of Tokyo or New York. I mean, isn't that so much of a concern that you just don't want to go forward with it and rather use coal, oil, and whatever else. Do you feel comfortable with Indian Point so close to New York City? <laughs> I've been inside Indian Point uh, several times inside the spent fuel pool, and uh, I think it's a very, very well managed and safe organization. Okay, there are concerns over there. However, we have to be the first one to admit there are some issues. There's uh, um, concerns about the amount of water it uses uh, is the most effective way of using water. But the idea is is that we need, as a society, to be able to manage risk. Nuclear technology has to be part of a portfolio of energy technologies as renewable energy technologies come down the cost curve 
And right. coming down the cost curve very, very quickly, it will have further, further penetration. I live in a solar powered house in Southern California. I get 95% of my electricity from the sun. I absolutely love it. That makes a tremendous amount of sense in Southern California. Right. But to power New York City, to power this country's industrial base, you have to have a tremendous amount of solar energy, and we haven't been able to deploy it as fast as we would like. Hence, we need some really robust, strong technologies right. like. Chris, we just have a little bit of time left. I just want to get, since you look at everything globally, I mean, there's some interesting situations around the globe. We talked a little bit about France, but Poland, Vietnam, Italy, and Chile. Give us some highlights there in terms of what we're seeing. And the Italians have said that they've made a $50 billion mistake by not investing in nuclear power. They were the first ones to close their reactors down after the Chernobyl incident. They closed several reactors down, and the head of the, the authorities over there said it was a $50 billion mistake. They are now reexamining the nuclear future in the country. Ironically, it's a country that has a tremendous solar resource. Now, solar energy can really, really prosper in a country that has good energy policy, mm -hmm that has high electricity rates and has a lot of sunshine. We have two of the three. We need to have the Italians come up with a very strong energy policy over there, combined with the high electricity rates and the uh, tremendous solar resource, and we can see a very rapid deployment uh, or increased more rapid deployment of solar energy over there. All right, Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Chris Kanamsi there from Bloomberg New Energy Finance. We'll take a quick